So hello everyone to this uh, Gant, uh, new Gant uh, series of talks. It's our pleasure to have uh, Polixenis Piloti from Gedigen and IHGS. Search for the British accent of the French uh, Institute, who is going to talk about race formulas and dynamical zeta functions for non unitary twists. Thank you, Xenia. Thank you, and uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, it's my pleasure to speak uh, at the Greek uh, Algebra and Number Theory seminar. Uh, so today I would like to talk about race formulas and dynamical set of functions for non-unitary twists. Um, I would like to start with an introduction to the dynamical set of functions. And uh, I would like to start with the famous Riemann set of function. And uh, in particular, uh, I would like to, to refer to this analogy between uh, the Euler product formula for the Riemann zeta function, uh, defined for real part of S bigger than one, and uh, the Euler product formula for the Ruel zeta function. So one can see already a first definition of the Ruel zeta function, this dynamical zeta function now. Um, so the Ruel zeta function is a complex function of one complex variable S, defined for real part of S bigger than one, and is given by this uh, Euler product formula. Now we have something geometrical and dynamical, no prime number, we have these prime conjugacy classes and some exponential here, which I would like to explain what it is. So we have these prime conjugacy classes in a lattice. Uh, geometrically, we are saying a hyperbolic surface and we consider a lattice in SL2R. So here a gamma, the elements gamma belong to this gamma capital. Uh, which is a lattice in the SL2R because we are saying a hyperbolic surface uh, situation. So we consider the conjugacy classes in this lattice that they are prime. And this conjugacy classes, for these conjugacy classes, uh, there is no gamma zero in gamma and no k integer k bigger or equal than two, such that gamma is given by this power, uh, gamma zero to the power of k. So gamma is here in the conjugacy class. So in other words, this prime conjugacy classes that corresponds to the prime closed geodesics. Um, so this is a, we know that in hyperbolic geometry that we consider now hyperbolic surfaces or hyperbolic manifolds in general, we know that there is one-to-one -one correspondence between the conjugacy classes and the closed geodesic on the manifold on the surface. Uh, so the prime close, the prime conjugacy classes correspond to the prime close geodesic. So for this, these prime close geodesics are the geometric analog of the prime numbers. So as we know that the prime numbers, they cannot be divided more, the length of this prime close geodesics, this L gamma here, cannot be divided more. And this lengths of the prime closed geodesics are here in this Euler product formula. So we have a product that runs, that runs over the prime conjugacy classes on the lattice, and we have a corresponding closed geodesic that is prime of length L gamma. And this is sort of geodesics, closed geodesic of sort of minimum length. So their length cannot be divided more. If we consider um, closed geodesics that are not prime, there is a winding number. So this winding number is how many times the closed geodesics traces its image. But in the Euler product formula for the Ruel zeta function, we consider only the prime closed geodesics. So the geometric analog of the prime numbers. And in the Euler product formula for the Riemann zeta function and the Ruel zeta function, the precise analogy is this. So we have the prime numbers, and then we have the exponential uh, of the length of the prime closed geodesics. So this is a precise uh, analogy. So why are these uh, dynamical zeta function, the well zeta function that uh, we saw, uh, why are they important? First of all, it's a, a geometrical a dynamical object. Uh, it has to do with uh, the closed geodesics and the geodesic flow on a manifold. So it's an interesting uh, object with interesting analytic properties, a complex function with that uh, in many cases one can prove 
um, meromorphic continuation to C and study special values. Is that a function? Um, moreover, there are, there are connections to mathematical physics, and in particular, uh, via the spectral theory of elliptic operators or other operators, there is this connection to the so-called quadrum chaos. And there are connections to number theory via the spectral theory of automorphic forms, and in particular, the Selberg trace formula. Um, so the Selberg trace formula is uh, one way to study these uh, zeta functions. And um, already observed by Selberg, uh, there are analogies in um, the analytic properties or geometric uh, analogies um, to the um, Riemann zeta functions and Riemann hypothesis uh, problems, in the sense that using the Selberg trace formula, uh, one can prove for the Selberg zeta function, not the Ruel zeta function that we have seen, um, that indeed the non-trivial zeros of these Selberg zeta functions lie uh, in the critical line. So there is a precise analogy with the Riemann hypothesis uh, problems and uh, conjectures. So there is some introductory uh, papers and articles by Ruel and Polcott for those that are interested in these uh, dynamical zeta functions. Um, moreover, there are analogies with zeta functions from number theory. And a very nice article is an article by Denke, a dynamical systems analog of Lichtenbaum's conjecture on special evals of Hasse-Weil zeta function, where it is discussed this, um, the Hasse-Weil zeta function and the Lichtenbaum conjectures on special values of this Hasse-Weil zeta functions. And analogies, there is a dynamical analog, uh, and, the, and this is the Fritz conjecture. So I would like to, to refer to this conjecture to the, in the second part uh, of, uh, of my talk um, in more detail. The Fritz conjecture has to do with the uh, special values of the Ruel zeta function, and in particular, uh, the central value, the, the, the value of the Ruel zeta function at zero, and connections to spectral or topological environment. So this is a dynamical analog of the, the so-called Lichtenbaum conjecture for the Hasse-Weil zeta function. Right. So there are many ways to study them. Um, some, uh, one of them is the transfer operators techniques or using more functional analysis technique and, and semi-classical analysis. What we do is use is to use representation theory of Lie groups, harmonic analysis uh, on symmetric spaces, and in particular, trace formulas. Um, in particular, today we will see a trace formula for a hyperbolic surface, which is uh, less complicated than uh, a general trace formula for local symmetric spaces. But uh, the advantage of this, of the trace formula, is that it unifies the treatment for local symmetric spaces, say, of rank one or of high rank also. Um, but this is the advantage in the sense that once one has a trace formula at hand, then one can study the zeta functions and prove meromorphic continuation and study uh, special values of the Selberg of the Ruel zeta function. So since I mentioned the local symmetric spaces, I, I would like to, to give some definition, some notation for these symmetric spaces, because this is our main uh, geometrical uh, object that we study. Um, so in general, we consider quotient of this, uh, of uh, gamma GK, this form, where G is a connected real semi-similar group with finite center and of non-compact type. K is a maximal compact subgroup of G. Uh, this, uh, the Goth notation math plaque uh, is uh, the corresponding Lie algebra. So uh, Goth G is the Lie algebra of G. Uh, Goth K is the Lie algebra of K. We consider this Cartan decomposition of G uh, with respect uh, to the Cartan involution, but I would like to, to refer to more details for this Cartan decomposition. So there exists this Cartan decomposition of G, of the Lie algebra. So Goth A, it's a maximal abelian subalgebra of P, where P is here in the Cartan, Goth P, in the Cartan decomposition. And we consider the corresponding uh, subgroup of G 
with Lie uh, algebra growth A. And here are some notation, we consider the group uh, M, which is the centralizer of A in K, where A and K is as before. So we consider initially this question GK. Um, and uh, we identify this GK with the universal cover of our local symmetric space, gamma GK. So using this cartel killing form, B, a, which is defined in a specific, specific way as the traces of the adjoint on, on the Lie algebras, but restricted to this uh, a golf P cross P, which P is us in the Catan decomposition, then uh, using this uh, Catan killing form, one can define a gene variant Riemannian metric on this quotient. And then using this gene variant metric, this uh, X tilde, this uh, universal cover of the local symmetric space we consider, um, is a complete uh, Riemannian uh, manifold. For example, we'll see some examples later. Uh, but for example, a uh, hyperbolic surface. So the Gaussian GK is uh, the hyperbolic uh, plane. Uh, where G is SL2R and uh, K is uh, SO2. But the Gaussian GK is a symmetric space, which has this specific uh, algebraic uh, construction uh, using these uh, Lie groups and Lie algebras. But geometrically, I mean, there is a reason why we call them symmetric space, because geometrically, the geodesic reflection about any point is a global isometry. So we have this symmetric, uh, geometrical, uh, symmetric situation. Um, the rank of the symmetric space or, or, of G is the dimension of this uh, algebra A, where A is a maximal abelian subalgebra of P from the Cartan decomposition. Now, geometrically, this rank, uh, apart from this algebraic uh, construction definition, geometrically, is the dimension of the maximal flat sub subspace of uh, X tilde, of the symmetric space. So when we consider, we say that we consider symmetric spaces of rank one, we mean that this dimension is one. And geometrically, uh, the dimension of the maximal flat, su flat subspace uh, of X tilde is one. And this corresponds to the geodesics. In the high rank uh, situation, so local symmetric spaces of high rank, uh, so this is bigger than one, this dimension. And geometrically, the, we consider this the dimensions of the flat uh, subspaces, um, which is uh, of co-dimension one. For example, if we consider a local symmetric space of uh, uh, Frank, um, of rank uh, two, uh, so then uh, we consider the uh, the maximal flat uh, sub manifolds of the symmetric space of dimension two. Um, okay, so we consider local symmetric spaces. So the local symmetric spaces are this quotient gamma GK, where gamma is a discrete co-compact torsion-free subgroup of G. Meaning that uh, we have a lattice uh, in G. Um, one can consider also other more general uh, lattices, but in the case that we study, we consider torsion-free and co-compact uh, lattices in the sense that the result in local symmetric space it's a compact, uh, compact manifold. And uh, there is no distortion-free uh, assumption is that we don't consider elliptic elements on, on the lattice. So there are no conical uh, singularities and no cusp. It's just um, a smooth, uh, compact uh, manifold. So we consider a symmetric spaces of rank one and uh, dimension two, and this is a case of a hyperbolic surface, or the case of rank one 
and the dimension of the local symmetric space is odd. So this is a case of a, a compact hyperbolic manifold of dimension D here, where D is odd. So non-unitary twists, <laughs> what, they, what are they? I, we consider this non-unitary twist that are finite dimensional complex representation of the lattice we consider, and they're arbitrary. So there is no assumption that are unitary or any other uh, assumption. So these are representations of the lattice we consider finite dimensional uh, and um, complex. And these are uh, some uh, more, uh, so some definitions in more detail for the twisted Selberg zeta function and the twisted Ruel zeta function. So the twisted well zeta function for compact hyperbolic surface here is defined um, by this Euler product formula. There is a typo here. This should be chi here. Um, I apologize for that. So chi is the representation we consider. And uh, the well zeta function, uh, again, is a function of uh, one complex variable s. And here should be chi associated with this representation chi. Is given again by this Euler product formula, where the product runs over the prime conjugacy classes in the lattice that corresponds to the prime closure J6 of length L gamma. And uh, we consider now this, this representation here. So now we have this determinant. So in the previous, uh, the first definition of the Ruel zeta function, we had this Euler product formula and no determinant, no identity here, and no twist by a representation. Now we consider the twisted version of this uh, well zeta function, which is this. Uh, and this uh, twisted well zeta function is defined for real part of S bigger than C2, where C2 is a positive constant. And the twisted Selberg zeta function uh, associated with chi is defined now by this double product, where the first product runs over the prime conjugacy classes, and the second product runs over K, and the k is here in, uh, uh, in the exponent uh, that we consider. Defined again for real part of S bigger than C1, uh, where C1, again, is a positive uh, constant. Um, I would like to mention that uh, it's not trivial at all to, to obtain this, uh, this domain of convergence. Uh, so to... to to see this uh, and, and write explicitly this C1 and C2. So this C1 and C2 depend, uh, do depend on the representation and um, they are related to the so-called critical exponents. Uh, it's not trivial to, to, to prove this and uh, one should use some things, some facts from uh, geometric group theory and in particular, some, some by Lipschitz condition between the word metric on the lattice and the hyperbolic metric. So it's not trivial. Um, so this is a definition of the zeta functions for the hyperbolic surface. And uh, here are the definitions of the two set well zeta function uh, for the all dimensional hyperbolic manifold case, which is a bit more complicated. Um, so here we have again um, the real zeta function for S complex variable defined for real part of S bigger than C, where C is a positive constant. And here we have again this representation chi, as before, complex finite dimensional representation of the lattice, and an additional representation sigma, which is a representation of this group M here, which is a centralizer of A in K. So there is a reason why, why we consider this in this um, hyperbolic manifolds now situation, why we consider additionally these this representations. Um, uh, in general, we consider these zeta functions associated with the geodesic flow on the unit sphere and bundle. And for this unit sphere and bundle, this M group is involved in the construction of this local asymmetric space we consider. And we consider a representation of this group M sigma. So we have an additional representation here, sigma. Um, one can say, since the D is odd, why we have this uh, 
this term here because then this is one. Uh, we have this term because this definition hold, holds for all the local symmetric spaces of rank one. And uh, this is a definition of the twisted Selberg zeta function for a hyperbolic manifold of four dimension or of a local symmetric space of rank one. It's a bit more complicated. It's defined again for real part of S bigger than, rho, than R, where R is a positive constant. Again, I have two representations, sigma and chi, here in the formula. I have a double product, as before. Uh, first product over the prime uh, conjugacy classes and the second product over k. This k here is here in this uh, k power of, this, of the symmetric uh, um, of the symmetric power of this adjoint map. This there are some more algebraic terms involved, but geometrically there is also an interpretation of this uh, term, and is related to the contracted part of the Poincaré map for the geodesic flow on the unit sphere bundle. So the definition is a bit more complicated, but uh, I would like to refer to this case to the. Uh, all dimensional hyperbolic manifolds in the second part of the talk and some um, uh, problems related to the so-called Fritz conjecture. At the moment, I would like to stay more in the hyperbolic uh, surface um, case uh, where the definitions are a bit uh, are more simple. So there is no representation uh, sigma. There, there is only one representation chi. And we have uh, these uh, definitions of the, of the zeta functions. Okay, so the trace formula. Uh, what we want to do is uh, to, to study these um, this, uh, zeta functions uh, using uh, the Selberg trace formula. But now the situation is different because we, we have this uh, twist. We have these non-unitary representations uh, of the lattice or of the fundamental group of the surface that uh, we consider. Um, in general, I would like to refer also again in the second part of the talk to more related work and all the people that they have worked before uh, in, for this uh, for proving the results um, uh, about these zeta functions, so meromorphic continuation, special values, but for the non-twisted case, so where there is no representation chi and no twist. Or if there is a twist, uh, this is a unitary or orthogonal and there the situation is way more uh, simple. So what we do is um, we consider a compact hyperbolic surface uh, where gamma is a co-compact uh, torsion-free lattice in SL2R. And we consider um, a finite dimensional um, complex representation of the lattice arbitrary. We consider the associated flat vector bundle. So one can define the uh, vector bundle uh, over our surface where the fibers are identified by with uh, this uh, representation space so these are the fibers of the of the flat vector bundle we can equip this flat vector bundle with a hermitian metric and a, and a flat connection and uh, what we want to do is do harmonic analysis and uh, using uh, this uh, Bochner Laplace operator or this twisted Bochner Laplace operator, and also use the spectral theory of this um, of this operator. So, what is this twisted Bochner Laplace uh, operator? Uh, this is defined uh, the the Bochner Laplace operator, no twist if one considers no twist and no representation, is defined by this uh, minus trace of the second covariant derivative of the um, flat connection on the flat vector bundle. So this is a very general definition. It's how the, the bochner laplace operator is defined. Um, roughly speaking, um, it's, it's a bit more general, this, uh, this definition. But uh, one can consider in this case of the surface that we consider that this is exactly the laplace Beltrami operator. Um, for uh, surfaces um, defined by minus uh, divergence of the gradient, for example. It's exactly the same. So all this second covariant derivative uh, that sounds a bit uh, exotic, 
Uh, it's just another way to describe the usual uh, Laplace operator on, on manifolds, say the Laplace Beltrami operator for the surface case. The difference is that now we have this twist here. And this is, uh, is denoted by this, the flat connection on the uh, flat vector bundle that is associated uh, to the twist. Uh, the thing is that uh, this operator um, is non self adjoint anymore because we consider this non-unitary representations. And this creates uh, several problems. So how to how we deal with this uh, non-self-adjointness and non-unitary uh, situation? So what we do locally, we describe this uh, operator as follows. We consider an open set U of the, of the surface such that the flat vector bundle restricted to U is trivial, which means that we have that uh, the flat vector bundle restricted to U is isomorphic to U cross uh, C to the power of M where M is exactly the dimension of this, of the fibers, of this representation space. This means that locally, by construction, when we restrict um, this operator uh, to this, uh, to this uh, open set U of X, that is, we restrict this operator to the um, smooth sections on U, not on X. So locally, this operator takes this form. Um, the, the usual Laplace Beltrami operator tends for the identity. Um, this is, a, this is a, the, the key point to solve the problems related to harmonic analysis that we want to use. Why? Because from this, one can see that uh, uh, this operator, this twisted non self adjoint operator, has exactly the same principal symbol as the usual Laplace Beltrami operator which means that it's an elliptic operator. Um, I know that it might sound a bit exotic, these elliptic operators in a number theory seminar uh, uh, talk, but uh, let's say that there are some nice conditions for these spectral, uh, spectral properties for these elliptic operators. In the, in the self-adjoint case, so where is the, there is no twist and, or there is a twist, but it's orthogonal or unitary, these operators, they have, um, they have been studied a lot and we know the spectrum. It's positive and uh, uh, real discrete uh, eigenvalues. The situation here is different in the sense that we have this ellipticity condition by this, by this construction. So we know that this non self adjoint operator um, is elliptic, but nevertheless, we don't have a real and positive uh, eigenvalues. But what we have, is this nice spectral uh, properties, that is, the spectrum of this non-self-adjoint operator uh, is discrete and contained in a translate of a positive cone in C. So we consider a cone in C, and all the complex discrete angular values are contained in this uh, cone. Uh, and this follows from a classical spectral theory of elliptic uh, operators. Again, under the assumption of compactness, because if we don't have compactness, basically this, this is an open problem in uh, spectral theory to describe the spectrum of these operators for, say, surface with cusps. This is an open problem. So in the case we consider, in the compact case, um, we know that, uh, that this operator has uh, these nice uh, spectral properties, discrete eigenvalues. And uh, they are contained in this uh, in this cone in C. So what we want to do is to derive trace formulas for specific integral operators that they are induced by this non self adjoint uh, a, a twisted uh, Laplacians. In particular, we utilize this heat operator. In general, one can consider more general operators, not exactly the heat operators. A, here we start with this non self adjoint uh, Laplacian, and we consider this test function e to the minus t x, and now the x, the variable, is replaced by this operator. So this is our test function, but in general, one can consider um, compactly supported test functions or uh, and derive other integral operators, or one can consider um, wave operators instead of the heat operator. But we, we use the heat operator. 
And uh, there is a reason for that. Uh, the reason is that the heat operator has, uh, and the heat kernel, it has been studied a lot and we have some analysis on, on related to the heat kernels, for example, asymptotic formulas, short time asymptotic formulas, or uh, big time as, uh, asymptotics, and um, nice results concerning analysis uh, with these uh, heat operators. So this heat operator, um, it's not trivial to prove that it's an integral operator. So an integral operator meaning that there is a smooth section H uh, denoted here. Uh, there is a variable T that has to do with this T here, the time, and the representation chi. So there is this uh, smooth section of this uh, endomorphism of the vector bundle uh, on X cross X, such that if we consider an L2 function uh, with value, values in the flat vector bundle, the heat operator can be uh, written as this integral with this smooth kernel function H T chi. Um, so this is an integral uh, operator. Um, it's also not trivial at all to prove that it's a trace class operators, operator. The thing is that we are in this uh, compact, uh, compact manifold, compact surface, uh, which makes the analysis a bit uh, easier. So all these results for the non-compact uh, surfaces um, are, it's, it's a very interesting problem, but to my knowledge, it's completely open. But in the compact case that uh, we consider, we know that uh, one can prove that uh, this operator is trace class. And by that, we mean that we can consider the trace of this, uh, of this operator, which is, this is a trace. And uh, meaning that this sum here is, is convergent. So this sum runs over the eigenvalues of this twisted Laplacian uh, with multiplicities. So these are the multiplicities. And then we have this corresponding eigenvalues of the heat operator, which is e to the minus t mi. And mi is the eigenvalues of the twisted uh, Laplacian. So this is not trivial at all. This is uh, Elitsky's theorem uh, hidden here in this equality. To consider the trace of this heat operator and the trace is equal to the sum and the sum is convergent. Already we see here a pre-trace formula in the sense that we started with this integral operator. We consider the trace of this heat operator, which is given by Litsky theorem, sorry, by Litsky theorem uh, by this sum. And then what we do is to take the trace here in the so-called geometrical side of the pre-trace formula. It's not so clear why this side is geometrical, but uh, it will be more obvious later on. So what we do is take the trace of this heat kernel. So we put x is equal to uh, y is equal, I'm sorry, y is equal to x. And then uh, we have this um, this function. Here is uh, it's a bit more developed because I have this, uh, I'm, I pass to this quotient gamma g. There is a reason for that. The reason is that these heat kernels, we consider that they are, one can prove actually that they are a k by invariant. So we end up with this quotient gamma g and this uh, kernel then as a, we end up with uh, a function uh, on g. Um, and then um, what we do is um, we consider the sum over the, the conjugacy classes or the elements in gamma. It's not exactly so clear how we pass from this uh, heat kernel to this heat kernel. First of all, this is not the same heat kernel as this. So here I have H, T, chi, and here I have H, T. The reason for that is that this heat kernel corresponds to the heat operator, which corresponds to this Laplacian, the Laplace Beltrami operator, the usual Laplace Beltrami operator um, on X. So this is by construction. How these uh, twisted Laplacians are constructed, we have this, uh, this local description here. And then when we pass to the corresponding heat operator, we have some, some analog of this. So the heat kernel, the heat operator, and then the heat kernel, when we pass to the universal cover, so here in this situation, 
can be sort of expanded uh, to the heat kernel that is associated to the usual Laplace Beltrami operator, tensor the identity. And then when we pass to the trace, we have the sum and this trace of the representation. So this is the idea. Uh, this is already a pre-trace formula in the sense that I have a, a formula with two sides. This is a spectral side, has to do with the spectrum of this uh, twisted Laplacian. And this is the geometrical side and uh, is, uh, is given in terms of this integral, which can be expanded more and have some more geometrical information. That's why we call it also geometrical side. So what we do now, uh, starting with this pre-trace pre formula, um, we group the summation into conjugacy classes and use Fourier inversion formulas on some Fourier analysis on the symmetric space we are to obtain this formula. Um, so uh, here we are in the compact uh, situation. So we consider torsion free co compact lattices, which means that we have two conjugacy classes, the identity, and the hyperbolic. So this part here, this is the expansion of the geometrical side. This term here corresponds to the identity element. Um, one can see it directly here, it's easy. So if we put here gamma is equal uh, uh, to the identity, then this is G minus one G, which is the identity. So you end up with this uh, heat kernel on, on the identity of the, of the group. Um, and then um, the integral gives you these terms, uh, uh, the, the volume of the, the surface, and this dimension comes from the, um, from the trace here at the identity. So this is the, the term that corresponds to the identity contribution. Now, if we don't consider gamma to be the identity, we have the hyperbolic um, elements only. And then uh, these integrals, are equal to this. This is not trivial, of course, <laughs> how to pass from this uh, trace formula to, to these terms in the geometrical side of the trace formula to this term. And um, there are also some other terms that uh, is inside the integral here, this theta lambda, that they're related to the representation theory of G, and in particular to the so-called characters of the principal series representations. Um, I will explain more uh, this trace formula and, and these terms here in detail. I would like to mention that one can see here why we say that this is a geometrical part. Because here we have, for example, the volume of the surface. And here already in the hyperbolic contribution part, one can see some geometry. We have here the L gamma and here also in the integral, um, which are the lengths of the closed geodesics on the, on the surface, not the prime closed geodesics, just the closed geodesics. So already one can see some, some geodesics, some geometry, maybe we will see also how the zeta functions are related to this, uh, these terms. Um, so this is um, uh, the theorem, which is a uh, joint work with uh, Jan Pham. So we consider a finite dimensional representation chi of the lattice gamma. Then the following silver trace formula for the heat operator holes. Um, this is a spectral side. This is a geometrical side. Um, here, the difference with the previous trace formula is that we use some expressions for these terms here and this term. This, this term here in the identity contribution is expressed by the so-called uh, Plancherel measure and Plancherel density. And moreover, there is this theta here, this character in the second integral, which is exactly this exponential here, this term. A, of course, here I somehow I, I didn't explain how one can pass from this to this, but I would like to, to refer to more details in the second part of this of the talk, and um, and also uh, describe the proof of this theory, which is uh, for a compact hyperbolic surface X and a finite dimensional complex representation of gamma chi, 
the twisted Selberg zeta function, uh, uh, zeta uh, s chi, admits a holomorphic continuation to C with zeros given by this uh, following formal product. So one can see that uh, the, the zeros of this uh, twisted Selberg zeta function is given by, by this uh, mi j. So what are they, this mi j? Uh, mi j are the eigenvalues of the twisted Laplacians, these discrete complex eigenvalues that they contain in the cone in C. And moreover, we have the so-called topological zeros at minus k of order that is related uh, to something topological. So G here is the genus of the surface, and here is a hidden Euler characteristic. So it's a, somehow some topology is involved. Um, and of course, one can see, one can guess, um, one can see and, and, and somehow guess some relation to some spectral theory and the trace formulas, because here we have the so-called spectral uh, zeros that they're given in terms of these uh, discrete eigenvalues. This is not random. This comes from the trace formula. Uh, not exactly this trace formula, but some integral transformation of this Selberg uh, trace formula. So uh, in the second part of the talk, I would like to explain how, first of all, what are these exotic uh, characters of the principal series representation and uh, that they're equal to this uh, exponential uh, here. And uh, how one can use this trace formula to obtain this result. Um, and, and, and sketch uh, the proof of this uh, theory. Moreover, of course, I would like to refer to the twisted well zeta function. Uh, so here we saw this result about this twisted cerebral zeta function, how one can obtain a holomorphic, holomorphic continuation of the twisted well zeta function for the surface, and some interesting asymptotic behavior at s is equal zero that is related to this Euler characteristic that we already saw. And moreover, present some results about this twisted uh, well and Selberg zeta function for the other dimensional case, but not in details, the proofs, because the, the proofs are again based on the trace formula for again, these heat operators induced by this twisted Laplacian. So the idea is the same. I just want to refer to the surface case because the trace formula is less complicated. And I would like to refer also in the second part of the talk um, to some results uh, and work in progress um, to the so-called Fritz conjecture, that is special values of the well uh, zeta function. And uh, I think I would like to stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Xenia, for the very nice talk. Let me stop recording so you can